Hello guys and welcome back to another tutorial for uh, the pets tutorial. We're going to be revisiting that and uh, worked on the code a little bit more as of 2028.3. Uh, so there's some extra code that we can do to test for some extra things. So um, yeah, we're able to make this pet tutorial a little bit more functional now. So uh, let's get to it. Uh, if we were to right click on the entity right now, uh, nothing happens. Before it, we couldn't use the right click event, but now we can. So what I've done is if I grab some wheat and game mode uh, survival, and if we right click on that, there's a chance that uh, they will change modes. So if we also grab a um, give slime slime ball, uh, we can tell it to stay. So as you can see that it stays now. And um, this will basically follow the player still, but it can't move, so it's in idle mode, so you can basically make it so the uh, pets and stuff stay now. And if you want it to follow you again, you can just set the uh, right click it with wheat and it'll turn back to its mode. So if we go over, try to find a sheep, I don't think there's any sheep around here. Um, if I recall correctly, there was a um, it was targeting sheep. You know what, let's just spawn some in. So if we go slash give, uh, spawn, I don't know if that's going to be And I got some test eggs for us. So uh, if we place down a sheep or two, and then right click on the mob again, as you can see, it just goes into attack mode like it did before. And uh, basically just kills any sheep that are in the area. And I still have it set up to that timer, so it will stop attacking after a while. I'm not sure how long a while is, but, um, you know, a while. <laughs> there we go. It stopped uh, attacking. I could probably work on that a little bit more and then make it so every time that it kills a sheep or whatever it or an entity it would... Um, reset, but I'm currently not sure how to do that at the moment. And the only other thing is, um, other than having it to stay, um, the code I've used is a little bit different now as well. So if we hop in to look at the code, I'll show you how it all works. So again, I've added a new entity. This one is uh, the stay version. And what that does is it basically just uh, puts the um, the movement speed uh, right here to zero. So it's the exact same um, same uh, one, basically same settings as the uh, rhinoceros tamed version. It's just uh, that the speed is, or the movement speed is set to zero, so they can't go anywhere. And then we have the other uh, attack mode and wild mode as well. Those are both separate entities. Um, if you haven't watched my previous pet tutorial, then go do that because it explains a lot more of the code. Um, and then if we start with the rhinoceros wild, I'll show you how that's all set up. So I need to clean out of that, go here. We'll skip to procedures. So we'll start with the entity die because we'll get that one out of the way now. So uh, before what we were doing was we're running it through local variables. I've changed this so it's a little bit easier to set up now. Um, what I've basically done was run it through MBT entity time or NBT entity um, tags and because the entity has um, isn't quite dying yet so it's going to cycle the items and stuff like that uh, this should work um, if it doesn't then it'll have to be either a global or uh, local variable still which is okay you just use the other uh, 
code that I provided. I'm going to bundle this particular version with the original script. So there'll be two different files, so or two different versions of this um, particular example. So you'll have both the first version procedures and the second version procedures. Um, so basically what it's doing is it's making a MBT tag set to a random number and it's doing that for both of them. It's going to do a random roll which is going to cycle uh, a random number between 1 and 0 and if it, the number is equal to or greater than 0 0.66 or a 33% chance then it's going to drop both items. If it's not then it's going to check to see if it's uh, 0 0.33 uh, uh, or greater than and then if that's true it's also a 33% chance. And it's going to drop um, one item, but it's also going to choose which item first. And that's where the random drop comes in, and then it's going to choose at a 50% um, uh, chance or 0 0.5 equal to or greater than um, and drop one of the random ones. If it's equal to or greater than, it's going to drop leather. If it's equal then or, or equal or less than or less than 0 0.5, then it's going to drop a bone. So with that being said, that's the new script for all the uh, rhinoceroses for the drops and stuff. So that's basically all there is to it. Uh, now the tamed mechanics um, are a little bit different, I think. I'm not sure if I messed around with it too much. But um, <clears throat> so what I've done is we're testing if, the, uh, if it's not on uh, client side. So this means that it's gonna be running from a server. Uh, the reason for that is because uh, we have a random number operator here. Actually, the more that I think about it, the these things probably should have used it too. So I'll have to go back and fix that uh, before I publish this video. But um, so basically, if you have any run random operator, you just in case this part right here in that part and then it should work fine. So. Uh, you can also probably uh, just wrap this around like that and that would work fine too. So um, as long as the random number operator is in that little code right there, it should be fine. So with that being said, what we're doing is we're testing if the source of the entity that is right clicking on the entity, so where that's where the source is coming from because we're right clicking on the entity, the entity is the target entity. So that makes the player the source entity. Um, we're testing if the source entity has uh, hay, or pardon me, wheat, in their main hand. If that's true, then it's gonna be testing to see if the, um, the code is running on server side. If true, then what it's going to do is it's going to test if the random number is equal to or greater than 0 0.5, which is 50% chance. And if that's true, then it's going to um, basically uh, set the spawn location of the current entity. And then it's going to um, set the direction of yaw. So the yaw is your y-axis rotation that will allow it to turn on the northeast, southwest directions, those that axis there and the pitch is your uh, up and down um, direction. So it's kind of when you hit, tilt your head up or down, that's where the pitch is testing for. And then it's just gonna spawn the tamed rhinoceros. After that, it's gonna despawn the um, current entity and it's also going to remove the wheat from the source entity location. Now the despawn, and the other tags here need to be event slash target entity. That's for the entity that you're right clicking on. So moving on to Rhinoceros, the tamed version, if we go to the procedures, I have it. So if it's hurt, it will turn into attack mode. Uh, this is really basic. We already covered how this all works. Uh, we're targeting uh, we're getting the target entity uh, event slash target entity and that's the current entity that is being attacked from and then what we're doing is we're 
again spawning it on the yawn pitch direction so it's facing the same direction and same pitch as the entity that um, we're currently um, that currently got attacked and then it's setting it to the attacked mode and then it's going to despawn the current entity so that's all that there is there and then we have a right clicked mode as well this will um, this is a little bit different that shouldn't be there um, we're testing if the entity has um, an the player because it's the source entity because we're right clicking on the entity with a slime ball so if the person is or the other entity is right clicking on the uh, current entity the rhinoceros uh, follow mode um, and it's going to test if it's they have a, s a slime ball if true then it's going to take the event slash target entity and set the um, pitch and rotation for the stay version and if not a slime ball then it's going to turn it into the attack mode so basically we're um, using a right click event to switch to the idle idle mode or to the attack mode depending on if we have a slime ball or not uh, just make sure that you're testing to see if your source entity has um, a slime ball not your event target entity because that would be testing for the current entity that you're right clicking on and that won't work all right so that's covered and the drops are the exact same all the way through so with that being said we have the stayed version and if we go over here and right click on that we're just testing the exact same thing but this time for wheat and then we're going to be spawning the entity and then we're going to be spawning the um, current entity that we're running the procedure from and the again the drops are the exact same it's all the way through so um, nothing has changed other than um, other than that so the attack entity is a little bit different we're going through an update tick and what we're doing here is we're running a timer on an MBT tag now, uh, Rhinoceros attack timer. We're getting the um, current entity slash target entity, or event slash target entity, and then we're setting the MBT tag to that, and then we're going to get that again, and then we're going to uh, set the same timer so we're getting the timer and then we're going to add 0 0.05 that is uh, one tick so every tick that it counts up then it's going to test eventually when it gets to the number that we're testing for it's going to switch back to the follow mode so with this uh, it's going to test for 30 seconds uh, you can adjust this number how you wish just make sure that these three here are the exact same MBT tags and that these are um, all on the targeting entity parts uh, right here. So make sure that's good. And then it's just putting it back into the follow mode and despawning the current entity. So with that being said, um, that's all there really is to it. We covered the wild version, the stay version, attack version and the rhinoceros version. If you want the code, I will be updating the tutorial on my website as well as the file for the downloads. I'm gonna be bundling this version with that other version and providing the download link so you guys can have access to the, all the procedures and stuff as well. So if you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe, comment down below, rate the video, and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching, peace out. Thank you.